Welcome to lesson 4 of the VHDL tutorial. Tonight I have what should be a little bit shorter of a demonstration for you. Uh, basically, we're going to be talking about how to use components within VHDL and how to use your VHDL designs inside of other ones. So, let's get started here. Now what I've created here is an AND gate. It's a really simple AND gate, kind of based off of what we did in the very first one. So you can see here that there's an A, B, in, and then it has a C output. And all it does down here in the behavior is say C is equal to A and B. And then again here, I've made the exact same thing except as an OR gate. So instead of an AND, right here we have C is A or B. This is well and good and all, but how do we connect these up or use them in any way, shape, or form other than just plopping them down on the schematic capture? Well, we can start using components. So, let's make some components here. We're going to start out just like we always do. So I'm going to start library IEEE, and we're going to use uh, standard logic. So IEEE dot standard logic 1164, all for everything. And we're going to start by making our entity. So we're going to call him Supergate because he is a gate of gates, champion and master of the universe. All right, let's give him a port. So we're going to have an inline. Um, I just wanted to have a, a larger than normal in vector so that we can play around with it a little bit. So we're going to give him a standard logic vector. And he's going to be three bits wide, so two down to zero. And we're also going to give him an outline. So this is just going to be the result of our function. and the super gate. All right, and once again, we'll start with an architecture. And I'm going to call this one structural. The word actually doesn't matter as long as you end it at the very bottom. Um, but when I build a structural model, which is what this is technically called, um, I like to name it structural. Algorithmic and behavior are uh, two different other models that we use. So behavioral model is what you guys were seeing in the past. It's more akin to programming. And structural is more like taking components and plopping them down. So it's a semantics game. You can play it if you want to. Otherwise, it is no big deal whatsoever. OK, but here's where we get into the meat and bones of this. So now I have those two components, and they're over here. So you have the AND2VHD and the OR2VHD. You have to make sure that these are included in this file uh, drop-down list here. So if, for instance, you had them already compiled, you could go to File, and uh, you should be able to go to Add Files to it for those of us. Uh, I'll just right-click instead. So right here, right-click, go to Add, Remove Files and Projects, and then right here is where you would navigate to it. So you would click on this guy, You'd say open, and then you would click add up here at the top, and it would add him down here in this little list. But in my case, I, I wrote these files here, and I just had them so they automatically populated inside of the file dropdown. So with those in mind, we can now create components, and we do that with the component keyword. So I say component, and two has to be the exact same name as what's up there. And then I say port just like I was creating an entity again. So I say A is in standard logic. B is also in standard logic. And C is out standard logic. And then I just say end component is the keyword you need to use. And then again for the OR gate, I do an OR2. I give them a port. And since they're the same variable names, I just copy and paste because I'm smart like that. And then again, we say end component. And then I'm also going to create a signal line. I'm going to call this and line. Now what this signal line is doing is when you have the output of the port here, you need to put it on a signal line or connect it directly up to an inline of something else. Um, it makes more sense to put it on a signal line because this represents basically a wire that's internal to your device. So imagine that you have a processor and it has a whole bunch of these little pins coming off of it that you want to connect to other things, you know, like a serial bus or say uh, RAM or some other peripheral, right? That's basically what this signal line is supposed to represent. It represents a wire going from one thing to another and it's persistent across time. So in other words, um, 
at time equals 1, uh, this and line might be 0. And at time equals 2, this and line might be 1. So, But it, it, what will happen is it will persist across until something changes. So at time 0, it's 0. At time 1, it's 0. At time 2, it's 0. And then on time 3, it changes because of something happening to it. And now it's 1. So it would go like that until the end of time or until something changes it. So signals are a good way for you to interconnect different components and in fact they're the recommended methodology for doing so. Um, unless you have really good reason for not doing so, uh, I recommend just sticking to signals between components. You can just have the, the outline go straight to the inline here. Um, that can get a little bit messy at times so I don't recommend that. Signals are the way to go. So once again he's just a standard logic. And now we're still inside the architecture and we're actually going to begin. And this is where, like before, we would start doing our logic. So, But right here, I'm going to instantiate a component. So I'm going to call this one my and. and. I put a colon there, and I say he is an and too, just like we would create uh, a standard logic vector there, or a signal, or something else. Uh, you're just saying exactly what he is right there. But we also need to do something a little bit more now. We need to give him a port map. So we say port map. And now this is where we can connect up what we want to connect up. So uh, I want to connect what's coming in off of my line uh, onto the inputs of the gates. So I'm going to take the bottom input, which is going to be in line, which is up here. And it's going to be in line 0. So that's going to this portion of the AND gate. And I'm going to take the second in line. And now that's going to our B input on the gate and then I am going to take the AND line for the output. So AND line is now going, coming, or is connected up to C here, which is our output from the AND gate. Okay. And we can do the same thing for my OR. So I'm going to create my OR gate. So that's an OR2. And then I'm also going to give him a port map. And we'll do the same thing. So he will have um, in line 2. going to him, and he's also going to have the result of our AND gate coming out to him. So we're going to give him AND line. So that gate is now going to this input right here. And then we're also going to connect him straight up to O, which is our output. So he's connected straight to the out pin of this super gate that we have here. Okay, so then we say end structural, or whatever you've called him, and we're done. The end. And if all goes well, uh, hopefully it will compile. So we will compile him and I will save my changes. And in fact, I'll call him Supergate. So he's not going to let me do that because I have this one already in him. So I'm going to kick him out and compile. So we have compiled. So let's make a cool symbol file for our neat new guy. Make a, a new block diagram. Oops. Having a little bit of trouble tonight. Alright, and now we will look into our project and look at that. We can just plop down our super gate right there. And now we can use it just as if it was one component, as if it was a black box. So creating uh, new components um, from ones that you already have is really a simple process. It's just a matter of making what you have um, at, a, at the simpler level and then wiring them up inside the structural diagram here. So this can be used to combine components that you've already made so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel or end up with gigantic VHDL files that are super massive. So I hope this lesson's been a little helpful for you tonight and uh, next week I'm going to try something a little different, hopefully a little Q&A. So if you guys have any questions uh, be sure to think of them, send them to me and I'll try to make next lesson all about Q&A. So Again, uh, feel free to send me any of the questions that you have, and I'll make a lesson out of it. Um, that includes this topic here, or just anything that you want to talk about relating to VHDL. Be happy to answer, or try to answer as best as I can. Thanks for watching, guys.